Hey gang. So I'm here with another technique type video. What I'm doing today is um, another method of working with those beautiful blends that you get sometimes. And you're never quite sure what to do with them. They look so gorgeous in rowing stage and you're like, hmm, you start to spin it and the color's muddy or you're just not getting a technique or an effect that you actually like. So let's have a look at a blend I've gotten. It's still morning, I need my coffee. <clears throat> I got this in a Paradise Fibers box, mystery box, Fiber of the Month box, which I've gotten so many just gorgeous things from them. I truly love it. I just nearly cannot afford it right now because the exchange rate is ridiculous. So this blend is called Warhol and it was from the pop art box that I've got. I can't remember what month it was. It was a while ago. So as you can see, there are some brilliant colors in here. There's some silk, merino, some flax. Hold on a second. I have the information on the actual blend here. So it is 15, 50% merino, 23 micron in four colors, hot pink, turquoise, chartreuse, which would be the yellowy shade, I guess. No, the green shade and violet. The yellow is actually silk. <clears throat> Pardon me. So that would be mulberry silk in two colors, white and sunset. So the yellow and the white. And then it's 25% flax in noir. I tried many methods of spinning this. I tried from the fold, I tried from the end, I tried so many ways. I love the brightness of the colors, I love the blends of the fibers, except for one little problem. This bad boy right here. This flax. I like flax, don't get me wrong. Flax I enjoy spinning, but flax is uber grippy. I find it very hard to try to draft it smoothly. I just find it's very, very grippy. And if you try to spin it from the fold, it tends to be really, if you can see this. Oh, 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 where's my camera? There it is. It tends to be very stiff, which is, you know, one of the qualities of flax. It's one of those things. Oh, flax, if you didn't know when it's spun up, becomes linen. I don't know why they change the name, but they do. So it's a very stiff fiber and it softens up with use and wash. So I was looking at this blend and I tried several ways to spin it. And finally, I decided on removing the flax from the blend. Now, this is a very, um, it's not like blended really a lot. You could try blending it more if you wanted to get a different blend of colors. But I'm just working from the top as I received it. And I'm just removing the flax. And my plan, as you can see, I've already done some up. You're going to get a little bit of other fibers in there, but that's fine. I'm going to take the flax and spin a single, a wet spin, a single of flax. And I'm going to take, I've done some of this already. I'm going to divide out the other colors individually. green, and sunset silk, and light silk. I apparently haven't finished separating these. I might just leave it blended with a little bit of color. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the merino 
and I'm going to core spin that onto a mohair core and then I will take my black flax single that I will have spun by then and I will ply it back with the core spun yarn. Now the core spinning is going to make it puffy and when I go back over it with the flax single that'll tighten it in, it'll make little puffs along the yarn. So it's going to be like a very poofy yarn. Anyways, oh, sorry, kitty cats are playing around on the floor again. They just love to make cameos. So I think what I'll do to start is I'll spin up a quick run of flax and set that, then take it off the wheel, set it aside so we can use it to ply with on the core spin. Then we'll do a little bit of core spin, apply them together just to show you how it looks. And hopefully this plan will work. I haven't actually done a sample spin yet, so let's do that together. I'll just reset the camera and we'll get to it. Because I keep talking about them, I thought I would share. These are my kitties. This is Latte. Hey, baby. And across the room, don't mind all my fleece I've been doing, is Bobbo. So let's spin some flax. I have a little dish here with some water in it. Here's the camera. This is just a little makeup sponge. I just put it in there to absorb some of the water. Help me with my spitting. And I have some flax. Now I do have my plying head on Lars, my Lendrum spinning wheel. I would normally just use my regular head, but I'm just I got it set up for core spinning and I'm just too lazy to go find my regular head. So I'm just going to attempt to spin this on my plying head. So take your water, get your fingers wet and smooth that over the spun portion. And I knew you were going to be a pain to get started. Now even um, toe flax, so there's line flax and toe. Usually toe flax is long enough that you can spin just a smidge and tie it on and the fiber will be long enough to make a join. Ta-da! All right, so let's start spinning ourselves. And you just keep wetting your fingers. You want to make sure you don't wet what you want to draft yet because if you get it wet it's not going to draft at all okay so this is a little clunky on the plying head it's a little <laughs> but it is working so that's all that matters and with flax once you're done spinning it you want to boil it to set the twist. I know, boil? Ah, terrifying. This is not, this is a plant fiber, not an animal fiber. It's not going to felt. It's just going to set the twist up nicely so you have a good, strong yarn. When you have to make a join, add some water to that. Start adding your twist, draft, and then slide your wet fingers over it. Now there's something about the natural occurring enzymes or something or other that appear in the flax that are activated by the water and further activated by the boiling and you know, all that techie stuff that, you know, I kind of read and then just forget about. I just remember the part of this is why, this is how you do it, the why, eh. I mean, I usually learn for curiosity's sake, but in the end, it doesn't really matter why. It just matters how, how to get the result you want, which is kind of how I approach all my spinning. It's like, oh, that's a rule? Hmm, yeah, no, it doesn't work for me, so I'm not gonna do it that way, because I wanna do it this way to get the result I want. The one thing I've, I always encourage with spinning is experiment. Don't ever think you can only do it this way or you can only do it that way because that's how it's always been done. Whatever. 
try something. If you think that this might work, give it a shot. You know, if it doesn't work, oh well, at least now you know why they don't do it that way. But don't ever restrict yourself from trying something because somebody says that's not the way it's done. Everybody has a different way of doing things. And if we never try new things, we never develop new methods and, you know, things never progress. And it, like I said, it might be that that's, you know, not going to work. And that's fine. At least you tried. I'm a big fan of that. Of course, I am a, what I call a gorilla spinner. I taught myself how to spin. I've never had a teacher other than the odd video on the internet. Mostly, I will watch videos on how people do it. And, you know, if you start doing that, you're going to see three or four different methods. And sometimes they say, oh, this is the only way to do it. But then you watch another video and they say, no, this is the way you do it. So it's really up to you to decide what's your method of doing it. All right, I think we have just about enough here to do a small sample spin. I'm just gonna be using this as my ply, so I think that'll be enough. So, get me a little bit more water for the end here. Always before I put my fiber through the orifice, because it's gonna lose some spin as it goes through, I always build up extra spin, apply it back on itself, and then let it go through the orifice. And it kind of just delays that unspinning, so to speak. All right, I have to turn my wheel a bit. And I'm going to make an Andean plying bracelet with my singles. And you can see I got that fairly fine without even really trying and on a plying head. I'm actually really impressed with how well that turned out considering I was doing it on my plying head. Now normally then I would boil this and that also softens it up, makes it a little less stiff because right now it's very, very wire-like. It has a lot of uh, structure to it. No drape, just structure. hard to break. This is a very strong yarn. Then I'm going to take my two ends. Now normally this would be for plying back on itself, but I'm just, because I'm just doing a sample yarn, I just want to have it readily available. Take off the ring, move that up my arm. There, now it's out of the way. I can spin my next ply and then I can ply the two together. Trying not to smash the camera here while I move my wheel. All right. Now we're going to do some core spinning. So we will re-thread our wheel. That's Bobo smashing around in the background, if you can hear that. So we're going to charge our leader. Always make sure you charge your leader with the twist you want because otherwise as soon as you start spinning your yarn, that twist is going to escape from your yarn and into your leader. So when you think you have a balanced yarn, you don't because you lost a lot of spin into your leader. And depending on the size, like the length of your leader, that could be a lot of twist you lose. Now this is a mohair lace weight that I got from Color Mart. I'll put a link in the box. I order lots from them, usually just the mohair course because they're absolutely brilliant for spinning horse bun. Oh, sorry guys. Put that down on the floor. And attach my core to my leader. All right.
So I just grabbed a random color. So we're working with these tealy blue and it's got the white silk in it as well. So we are going to core spin this onto our core. Work at a 90 degree angle and let it wrap around your core. You can make it as big and fluffy as you want or you can make it a smooth tight core that will end up with not much extra size. It all depends on how much fiber you grab before you pull it. I like it fluffy, especially since I'm going to be binding this with the flax core that we have on our arm here, or flax single. So I'm going to make this a fairly chunky wrap. You can see there's a little bit of flax in here too. And that's why I was having such a hard time with this is because the flax gets so it's wiry and it just sticks out and it'd be itchy and yuck. Just not what I'm looking for in a yarn. Now I'm using a fairly high uptake on this so that it's pulling it onto my wheel fairly quickly. Now if I was using this as a single, I'd be more worried about making a balance yarn. But since I'm going to ply it, it'll be, it'll balance out better because I'll be taking some of the twist out. So I'm probably adding a lot more twist than I would normally do for a singles course bun. All right. And you can see core spun goes pretty quickly. And I find it a very relaxing spin. And I love the result. It's a fluffy yarn and it's just soft and amazing. Now it's not really hard wearing yarn, obviously, but it is very warm because it does trap so much air as you core spin. If you wrapped it tighter, it would be a longer wearing yarn. But I'm actually going for a look of a very soft, fluffy, poofy yarn. And I think Bobo just broke something. You know, cats, they're like that. All right, break off our core. And again, before I let it through the orifice, I add extra spin and pull it back on itself and then let it through the orifice. Now, we're going to, I'm not as good at this, so don't laugh at my Andea plying bracelet on this hand. I don't normally do it this way, so I'm not as smooth at it. I have to stop and think about it. I do this anytime I'm doing a, a test spin. I'll generally do it this way. Just makes it easier. You're just working with a small amount of fiber. And you know, it's always good to practice ambidextrous, ambidextrous techniques. All right, tie my hands together so I know where they are. Oh, I forgot my scissors. Nope, I got my scissors, okay. All right, tie my hands together. So I have on this hand, I have my core spun. You can see how twisty it is. A lot of that's going to balance out when we ply it with our flax, which is on this hand. So let's spin the needle back around. Thread her up. Now you gotta remember, change the direction of your spin. So my leader is still charged with S or counterclockwise twist. So before I even get started, I have to take that twist out and then add in Z twist. So you can see how long that took to take the S out, put the Z in. Now, if you don't do that, again, all your twist is gonna run into your leader. Make sure you're charging your leader. All right, now comes the fun part of trying to manage both of these. Try not to laugh too hard at me, okay? So 
cut off our little knot. And then I will take one end, go through the middle, and then tuck it into my sleeve to anchor it. Okay, can you see that? There's the end coming out through there. That's just to anchor it. I have the other end here. Now we will do the same thing on this side. Is that my knot? That's my knot. Cut the knot off. Take one end, go through the middle of the bracelet, bring it down, tuck it into my sleeve to anchor it. So now I have two plies, one on each hand. And I will attach it to my leader. We are going to apply my singles of flax around my corresponding merino. There we go. Now I want an unbalanced because I want the flax to kind of wrap the core. So I'm going to hold my flax out to the side so it's an uneven ply. So we get this effect. You can see how it makes like little clouds. It's so pretty. I'm very pleased with how it's turning out actually. Built up a little bit too much twist, so I'll just let some of that run into it. Now you can see if you build up too much twist, you can just let it run through until it starts to look like this. Then you know you need more twist. So we just start treadling again. It's a good way to play with your twist when you're working with this, which is a very unbalanced plies and they're very different. You can always just even out your twist by just letting it run through until it starts to get too loose. Back it off a bit, start applying again. And certainly like a park and draft kind of method is perfectly valid. So build up your twist, stop treadling, then work it through your fiber. You can pinch there, build up your twist, stop treadling, and let it into your plies. There's so many techniques for plying. You can play around to find something that's comfortable for you. When you are working with something like this, it is a little trickier because it's so, the twist is so unbalanced in the plies, but I just love the effect so much that it's worth it to me to mess around with it and take the time to make it. I just love it. All right, we are almost at the end. All right. So then, since we still have a fair amount of flax left, we can find our other end. it on here and then 
just to apply the rest of the flax, which is now linen because it's been spun. twist in the end, apply it back on itself, let it through the orifice. Now let's get this off the wheel and have a look at what we have. If I'm just doing a quick sample skein, I'll often just use my arm as my knitting knotty. And then just do a quick knot to hold it together. And then one with this end. All right. So there's our sample spin. You can see I still have a bit too much twist in there. So I'll be a little more careful in applying. But this is the yarn you get. It's like poofy and fuzzy, but it's gonna get like such amazing strength from that linen single. It's going to make it so amazingly strong so while you'll have this soft poofiness, you'll have strength as well. And I plan on just spinning color after color so you end up with this beautiful bright rainbow of colors in your core spun and then the black just running through it. I'm going to keep core spinning for tomorrow's video when we're going to discuss the Bennington Triangle because it's October and we love the spooky stuff. So join me for the next sit and spin where I'll be spinning this fiber core spin. Thanks guys. Bye.